um, Louis Coppola from uh, Governance and Accountability Institute. Okay. I was just interested, I feel like, since nobody asked a question, I'd throw this one out there. What you're doing around the artificial intelligence, you know, looking at uh, ESG through that lens, because that's just something that sounds really yeah. interesting. Yeah, so the way that ESG data has traditionally been um, compiled is with surveys. Um, the better firms will scrape the sustainability reports and the other filings that firms make around the world, and then they'll send a survey partially filled in to the firms and ask them to fill it in, and then they'll have ESG um, analysts look at them. Um, the firms, A, complain about um, survey fatigue, and so many of them don't fill it out. and. There's no timeliness. There's no um, there's no assurance around them. The there isn't FASB as much as I like SASB and I think their stuff is good. It's not a mandated reporting system. And the very first U.S. company, JetBlue, to their credit, decided to do their sustainability report according to SASB standards. Um, and so the question is, in some ways, how do you leapfrog that? How do you leapfrog all the problems? There are 100 different rating firms, literally. I mean, not all of them are geared to investors. Some of them are geared to consumers, but they're still rating firms. Um, and some people out in the Bay Area, where else, uh, <laughs> had the brilliant idea of why don't we use machine learning and artificial intelligence to come up with real-time ESG ratings. Um, and in the analogy I use is it's sort of like why do very poor emerging markets have better mobile tele telephone systems than parts of the United States because they didn't have a legacy. Um, and they realized that they couldn't lay the line and they were going to just leapfrog it and go right to a good mobile system. We don't think that – I like a lot of the rating firms and I would buy some of their data. I wouldn't use it unmodified, but I'd certainly buy some of their data. Um, but having the artificial intelligence is another way, and it's a real-time way. You get it, you can get it real-time, but they basically deal, do daily batch processing that will tell you what's happening in the Twitterverse and in filings and in news articles about company X. Is it going up or down? And is it about executive compensation or is it about environmental pollution or whatever? And you can click and decompose it all. Um, I don't want this to sound like an ad, so I will tell you some of the problems. All artificial intelligence has an error rate. Um, the error rate, if you're doing sort of statistical analysis, doesn't matter. If you're doing individual security analysis, it could well matter. It needs to be verified. Um, secondly, there isn't enough data on a number of smaller cap or other jurisdiction firms. The more data, the more um, accurate is any sort of machine learning and artificial intelligence product. So it's very good around large cap. They're trying to solve that problem because obviously large cap may be the place you need at least. Uh, um, so that's what they're doing and some of the pros and some of the cons.